Vaughan. This is Jeff Wilkerson, professor of physics at Luther College. This is an introduction to week two of our DC circuits lab for general physics two. So what we're gonna do in this second week of this experiment is we're gonna continue working with these six resistors that we worked with in week one. And we are going to try some parallel and uh, series combinations. So the first thing I would like for you to do is to take these two smallest resistors, least resistance resistors, that you, you measured the resistance of very well in week one, and hook them up in parallel with one another and predict what you think the resistance should be based on the work that you did in the first week of the experiment and then uh, measure that resistance and see how closely it matches. Then let's take the two largest resistors, highest resistance value resistors that you worked with in week one and hook those up in series with one another. Predict what you think the resistance should be based on what you uh, measured in week one and measure the resistance of those resistors in, in series. Then let's try to put these two big ones in parallel with one another and put that and put these two in parallel with one another and then put that parallel combination in series with this parallel combination. So this is just practice for you thinking about how to actually make circuits of parallel and series combinations of resistors. Predict what the overall resistance should be, measure the resistance. Uh, measure all of these resistance values very well like we have not been doing, you know, multiple times at multiple uh, potential differences and multiple currents through the circuit and see uh, if you can get enough data to really test your model of whether you um, are getting what you think you should be getting when you hook these things up in series and parallel. So that's what we start with. Uh, three combinations, uh, parallel, series, and then parallel, parallel in series with one another uh, to, to measure those resistances. So as you saw in the week one, once you get going, the data comes in pretty quickly. And then we're gonna add a, a portion of, of the experiment where the data comes in really quickly. And we're going to work with um, we're going to work with an RC circuit, a series RC circuit, and we're going to charge up the capacitor and discharge the capacitor and try to determine what the capacitance value of that capacitor is. And so we've got three resistors over here. We're going to use the three larger resistors on the board in series with this capacitor. And I recommend this where there's actually a lot of different ways we can hook this up and run this experiment. We need some kind of switch to start charging or start discharging the capacitor. And so we're gonna use this as the switch right here. Uh, we could use this as the switch down here. As I say, there's a lot of ways we can hook this up. So what I've got set up right here, this is just the power supply that we had before that we used in week one. And I've got everything turned down when I turn it on except that the current limit is turned all the way up. And I'm actually gonna power this up to three or four volts, two volts, it doesn't really make much difference. So something on the order of a few volts, there's two and a half volts, just, just nice. Um, and so now, when I push this button, let's trace where this comes in, the, the, the positive comes in here and then continues over on this side of this switch. So when I push this button, uh, the rest of the circuit will be connected to this uh, power supply. So it's gonna come through here and it goes around here and it goes into this resistor right here. It comes out of this resistor and goes into the capacitor, comes out of the capacitor right here and goes right back over into the power supply. So that's a pretty simple, straightforward uh, series circuit. We've got the resistor in series with the capacitor. And when I depress this switch, uh, and then we're gonna get current that's gonna be able to flow through this circuit and it's gonna start to wanna charge up that capacitor. So that's, we're gonna measure the potential across the capacitor to try to get our, our RC time constant. And from the RC time constant, we are going to um, try to determine that capacitance value. I, I'll have a separate video out there to walk you through some data analysis ideas uh, for this part of the experiment. And I've got another, actually a theory a video or two out there as well. So I'm gonna put several videos out there for you to watch as you're, as you're doing this. And then uh, I can walk you through this. The data is going to come in relatively quickly. Uh, this voltage probe is the, the LabQuest uh, logger probe, Vernier logger probe voltage probe that we're using. So we're going to take the data. We've got to get the data quickly. Bam, 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 bam. And so we're going to use the logger probe to do that. So 
I've got, we're gonna, let's go over here and look at the, the computer here. Uh, this Slogger Pro is set up to go into the USB port. I tried it in this USB port and it didn't recognize it. So I just moved over to the other USB port and I got to log back in here. It timed out on me. Okay. So here we are with, we're going to just open Logger Pro. There it is. If it's, it, it recognizes that this is a potential uh, a difference meter, this is, this is measuring potential, and it's got a potential that's listed right there. I can go up here and change that if I wanted to, uh, to, to change the sensor setting or something like that. Let's come up here and do data collection and see what happens, if, what's under this data collection. It says time-based uh, duration, 18 seconds, 10 samples per second. Uh, that's pretty good, actually. Um, let's make it, I don't think we need 20 samples per second, but let's do 20 samples per second. And when we do 20 samples per second, that means every, every 0.05 seconds, it's going to measure the potential difference across that capacitor. And let's actually run this for 25 seconds. I, none of this is, none of this is magic. Uh, you can play around with this and figure out what it is you want to do here. Uh, but let's, um, that, that seems like a good place to start, and then you can twiddle around with this. Okay? So now, when I push this, there's time across here, and potential difference across our capacitor up here. When I push the collect button, we're going to start getting data. And I'm going to push the collect button, then I'm going to go back over and push that red button on the board, and start to charge up the capacitor and see what happens. So here we go. Uh, I'm going to... I don't know what's the, I don't know if you can see that well or not. But in any event, I'm going to come around here and actually try to move this back over where you can see it without disconnecting stuff. I'm going to start the experiment. And then I'm going to depress this button, charge the capacitor. I'm holding it down, holding it down. Capacitor looks good and charged. I'm going to discharge the capacitor. Oh, look at that. I'm going to charge the capacitor. <laughs> I'm going to sing the Jaws theme music. Uh, I'm going to discharge the capacitor. And that looks great. So we've got uh, two full charges and two full discharges that we measured there. So we can measure the RC time constant four times, twice while charging and twice while discharging. Search, trace your board. Look at the board and say, do I think it's discharging through the same resistance that it's charging through? And make sure you're clear about that and measure that and get and see what you can, can determine uh, the RC time constant is. And then use your digital voltmeter to measure the resistance of that resistor. And once you have the resistance of that resistor, then you can calculate the capacitance of the capacitor there. And then move on to this resistor and this resistor. And maybe if you want to, if you've got time, do some series combinations of all, it's like a series combination of this resistor, this resistor, and this resistor after you've done each one individually. And you can do um, each experiment with each resistor or each combination of resistors, you can do uh, several times. You saw it, you know, it took us 25 seconds. That's how long we took data right there. And so you can do that three or four times and then go to the next resistor and do it three or four times and the next resistor and do it three or four times and then a combination of resistors three or four times and then a different combination of resistors three or four times and see how the pattern, part of that is just with different resistor values, same capacitor, different resistors values, just to your eye, how does that pattern change on the screen out there? Can you see the time constant difference? Do you see why it takes longer for the, the capacitor to charge in some instances? You see how it's taking longer for it to charge in some configurations with some resistances than it is with other resistances and so on. And so now, let's actually walk through how to get the data out of here uh, once you've got all of that in there. So let's come back over here and we've got our data stored up right here. And I'm gonna go under file and say export as CSV, you see I already did it once there. So I'm going to export it as CSV. And it says test uh, is out there. I'm going to export it as uh, test2. And I'm writing it to the desktop. I chose desktop up here. So test2. 
and say save this CSV file, and there it is. And if you want to do this analysis in Kaleidograph, and I think you probably do, uh, there's a separate video out there that tells you how to read a text file, a CSV file like this into Kaleidograph to start to do some of your analysis. And I'll, 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 I'll walk you through the kind of analysis that you, that you want to do as well in a separate video. But that's what we got for our experiment for this week. So when you're in the lab, uh, this, is, this is sort of the work. That's the, a layout of the work you want to do in the lab this week. We're going to measure uh, resistors in series and parallel, predict what the resistance values should be of those combinations, and then test those, and test those pretty, pretty stringently to see if we can, uh, if we're actually getting what we think we're going to get when we hook them up that way. And then we're going to go to this RC timing circuit and do the experiment that we just did here. Uh, that's, that's our experiment. Uh, we'll have more for you in other videos in terms of data analysis and such. Thanks, everybody.